Okay. So as you can see, they are recording this. So if you need to get anything um, later, you can you can get the information from Cecilia. So I, Goizueta Business School is located at Emory University, and Emory University is located in Atlanta, Georgia. That's in the southeast of the United States. So many of you are familiar with the U.S. Some of you may not be as familiar with Atlanta. We're just a little bit north of Florida, so think of a drive from Disney. We are about six hours from Disney, and we are a top 20 research university, and we have schools at both the graduate and the undergraduate level. Um, we are located, as I said, in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is a city of about six million people. Um, it's it's a vibrant city. There's a lot going on here. What's important for students that are coming in and doing their MBA is to know that Atlanta is the number three city in the US for Fortune 500 headquarters. And as a student, that gives you a great advantage because you can go and you can meet with some of these companies and you can have information sessions. You can talk with them. You can meet our alumni that are working at these companies, et cetera. So on the center of the screen, there's just a few of the companies that you might recognize who have their headquarters in Atlanta, Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, Home Depot, Kimberly Clark, Mercedes-Benz of North America. And then um, it's important to know too that not only is it a busy city with a lot of corporate headquarters there, but there's so much to do. So whether you enjoy professional sports like the Braves or Atlanta United, our football or our soccer team or basketball, the Hawks, or you like theater and you like going to concerts, et cetera, there is so much to do within Atlanta. And of course, our location is very key, especially for those of you living in Latin America. Um, it's just a quick flight from Atlanta to Bogota or to uh, Rio or to Buenos Aires. We have direct flights to all of the uh, countries. And it's very important as you're thinking about getting your MBA in another country, you want to be able to have that quick access should you need to go home for any reason. Um, we think that the Goizueta Business School is, uh, has a very unique value proposition for you. And that is that we are the US business school that is smaller in size, but yet we still deliver that, that very strong world-class business education, always doing it in the small size. You're getting to know your faculty, you're getting to know the other students. And then of course, we're doing it in a city like Atlanta where you have all that access and you can spend your time in class as well as visiting companies. We are the Goizueta Business School. We're named for Roberto C. Goizueta, Mr. Goizueta was the chairman and the CEO of the Coca-Cola company until his death in 1997. And that is the year that the school took on his name um, and our new buildings were inaugurated then. And to the right of the screen, these are what we call the core values. These are the values by which Mr. Goizueta lived his life and also by which um, we, we embrace these core values. We expect them of our students. Notice the one in the middle is rigor very rigorous program. You are coming to an MBA to learn, to, to excel, to gain knowledge, and you will get that at Emory. We, we expect you to be accountable. We hold ourselves accountable. We, it takes courage to get an MBA. It takes courage to give, give up what you're doing right now, maybe for one year or for two years, and to begin on this new um, path to get your MBA. So, I want to talk quickly about the program. So we have a two-year program and a one-year program. The two-year program is what you think of as the traditional US MBA. It's two semesters followed by a summer internship followed by two more semesters. We then also offer a one-year program, which is just three semesters long, which begins in May and ends the following May. The big difference between our two programs is that the one-year program does not have an internship. So the two-year program begins in July and has an internship. The one-year program begins in May and is three semesters, no internship. And I'll talk a little bit later about 
why you would choose one over the other. What are the advantages? And Alejandro can speak to that as well because he has had classmates from both sides of the program. So this is the typical profile of what our students look like in the class. Now, these are averages. And as far as the GMAT, it's the 80th percentile range. So if you're on either side of these numbers, it doesn't mean you can't apply. It just means that these are the 80th percentile. So the program size is about 150 to 180 in the two year and 50 to 60 in the one year program. GPA, this is a 4.0 scale. I know some of you are on the 20 scale, some of you are on a 10. We even it might have some 11s attending the session tonight. Um, at, but average years of work experience, this is important. The five, five and a half to six years of work experience, we like students that are coming into the program to have at least a minimum of three years when they start the program. Going back to the rigor of the program and the accountability, you are expected to have had some experiences. It doesn't have to be in business, but it is in life so that you can relate what you're learning to situations and work that you have done. So your work may have been in the arts. It doesn't have to be in business, but you have worked. You've been on teams. You understand what a strategy might be. You understand some of these concepts coming in. You are not coming directly out of school. We do take the GMAT or the GRE. We only give the averages on the GMAT. I wanna tell you, we are a globally diverse class. Um, the past year has been a little bit different because of the pandemic. I think it's been different everywhere in the world, right? Uh, and, but, Typically, we enroll about 33 to 37% international students into our two-year program, and then 17 to 20% in the one year. And that's more a function of uh, whether those students are looking to have the internship. So we have a long history of enrolling Colombian students at Goizueta, many Latin Americans at Goizueta. We have a very active Latin Business Association. We also have a team member on the program staff that is completely dedicated to our international students. For anyone coming in who doesn't feel quite so comfortable about their English, there's a four week language program. And then we do have a very solid alumni network. In Colombia, our um, Medellin has our largest alumni group in all of Latin America living in the country. We have of course, alumni from all countries in Latin America represented. These are some of the countries that come to Emory. So you'll meet students from across the globe, really truly from across the globe and get experiences learning about their countries, their style and ways of doing business, as well as have the opportunity to travel to different countries for different um, programming. So um, I'm going to leave this for now and get into the classes because I want to make sure that we have that time with Alejandro to have a little bit of a chat. So when you're at Emory and you come in, whether you're in the one year or the two year program, your first semester is always going to be what's called the core. The core are those required classes that everyone takes. And then after the core, you begin taking your electives. So whether it's the one year program or the two year program, you always do the core first and then you take your electives. We have concentrations. We have over 20 concentrations and about 90 electives to choose from, but you do not have to declare a concentration at Emory. So when you're making an application for an MBA program, you're going to tell us about your goals and we're going to get an idea of where you think you want to go. You may start down that path. You may think that you want to do entrepreneurship, but after you take some classes in the core, you may see that what you're really interested in is consulting or in marketing and you may switch. You don't have to stay on a path. Most students graduate with two or three concentrations, uh, and that just depends upon how many classes in a specific area they take. So three or four in one area will lead to a concentration. And I want you to notice that we do have one STEM concentration now, and that is our business analysis 
within the MBA. And a STEM concentration means that if you're an international student and you study and have that concentration within that STEM area and then take a position with a company for a STEM approved job with a STEM approved company, then you can extend your one year OPT to three to be three years. So you extend it by an additional two years. But again, that's got to be within the STEM concentration. There's some pretty strict rules around that, but we do have this concentration. Kate, okay, okay, sorry to interrupt. For people maybe are not um, aware of what OPT means, it's like when you do a master's degree in the US, you have the ability, uh, possibility to work for one year. That's called OPT. And Thank then you. when you're a sponsor, you get the H-1B in which they give you that year to or three years to work. Um, but then like if you get the STEM, you have like additional time without even getting into the lottery. Before you go to the lottery. Great. Thank you. Um, this is just a very brief. I wanted you to see how this is how the core looks. Your classes are morning to afternoon, Monday through Friday. There's an occasional Saturday. Um, you can see it's a very diverse, very rigorous program. And then you'll start doing your electives in your spring of the two year program. And then after your internship, you'll have that in the fall and in the spring, you'll be doing all of your electives. Okay. There are a number of strategic initiatives and research centers at Emory. We have the Goizueta Business and Society Institute. This you can think of as social entrepreneurship. Marketing and analytics center, which looks at um, general marketing in business, marketing and sports. We have the study of fandom and fanalytics, looking at how people um, relate to sporting and entertainment, how they're doing that. There's leadership development. You can earn a certificate in advanced leadership. We can teach you how to be a coach. We can, you can go through a program, the Delta Airlines Leadership Coaching Fellows, as well as participate in something that's called the Goizueta Advanced Leadership Academy, otherwise known as GALA. Then we have our Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, where students can bring ideas that they have or work on ideas with other classmates on starting up a business. You get to present to the professors. You get to present in, in concert with others. Uh, you may have an opportunity to work at a new center called the Hatchery, uh, where students get seating and they can work on these business ideas together. So a lot going on at the school. And we go outside of the school as well. So you may have classmates in that 37% or in that 17% if you're in the one year from across the globe, but you'll also have an opportunity to go and travel to another country in something that's called the GEM, a Goizueta Global Experiential Module. They used to be called mid-semester modules. So if you're talking with some alumni, they may refer to it differently. But these are opportunities where you go to another country and you look at business being done in that country and in those different cultures. Recent and upcoming MSMs or GEMS are Brazil, uh, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, the Netherlands. We had to suspend during the pandemic, but we fully expect to be back to traveling for the GEMS again this year. They're typically in March. Additionally, you may, uh, if you're in the two-year program, you may do a full semester at another university in the across the globe. Some people have done it in Singapore, others in, in China, others South Africa. You pick the country you want to go to. We have partnerships across the globe. Or if you're in the one-year program, you can do a short or a brief uh, two-week to one-month exchange program. There are some hey, restrictions I, around. I, actually, uh, myself, that I was in the two-year program, I did one of those classes abroad, and I did like uh, three credits that I did in Israel. So that's also okay. a very interesting option that you, you guys can, can, can have. The program is very flexible, so you, you can opt to those options. So they can do the they can do the full semester or the shortened 
courses, but the one years can only do the short, shorter courses. And these are great opportunities and you can have a number of them. I think the, there's some students that have gone on three or four different opportunities over the course of their time at the program. Okay, one of the main reasons that you come to get an MBA is your career. Either you have decided that the career you're in is the one that you're going to stay in, but you need more knowledge and so you want to get further in depth on it, or you want to make a complete change and you want to pivot, move, go to something different. So we help you with that and we have our career management center. They are a management center, not a placement center, so they will work with you. The career management center is divided into the coaches, that work individually with the students and prepare them to meet with recruiters and get them to companies. And then we have the outreach group that work directly with the companies to learn about opportunities to get the recruiters to campus or get them to a Zoom info session or to interview students, as well as getting our students to the career fairs and to getting our students on the different career treks. So you have to bring your piece, which is your experience, your background, your success as a student, and a commitment to hard work. And they, the career management staff, they bring the tools and the resources, they give you the coaching, they get you the access to the recruiters, and they can provide you with the all important employer feedback. And you can work with your coach as much as you choose to. This is up to you to get that relationship going and to work with them. And um, if you want to switch your coaches, you can. If you switch your career goals, you can switch coaches or you can stay with the same coach. Depends on the relationships that you've developed. So these are some of the career outcomes and this is for the class of 2020. Every year we have to wait until three months post-graduation to put up the new numbers. So this was in the class that graduated three months into the pandemic. And these numbers are extremely strong. I want you to see how well these numbers are. 92% of the students had jobs with job offers within three months of graduation. 100% had internship offers that are, have been looking for them good, strong starting salaries, 800 full-time on-campus job opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very strong and robust program. Couple of um, hiring companies by their logos that some of you might recognize uh, and, and rec recognize. Of course, there are others. So what I encourage you to do is to look at the employment report, which you may get by downloading it from directly from our website. So the admissions committee, what are we looking for? The same thing that all MBA programs are looking for. So we want to know about your work experience and you tell us about that in a one maximum two page resume and on the application itself. We want to know about your academic background. So we will look at copies of your transcripts for the purpose of evaluating, we can use a copy. We need test scores. We are taking test scores. GMAT, GRE, and TOEFL, unless English is your native language or you studied in, in a US um, undergraduate program. An interview is an integral part, it's an important part of the process. So you will have the opportunity, um, if your essays are strong, you could be invited to interview or you may request an interview during what we call our open interview period, which is in August through early October. Three essays and one short video essays and we want to know about you. I think most important to many of you is the scholarship opportunities. They do exist. They are merit-based. That means that we don't take into consideration and can't take into consideration need-based. Um, you don't have to apply separately. So if you are invited to the program, you may be awarded a scholarship or you may not be. About 50% of the students get some form of scholarship. It can range from 20% to 100%, and we let you know when we tell you your decision. 
Um, in addition, though, there is a way to get financial aid, and that is through a loan for our international students through the Emory Credit Union, and that is without a U.S. co-signer. There is also the opportunity for those of you that um, maybe in Colombia, you can use uh, Col Futuro. If you're in Mexico, you can go to FUNED. Uh, Becas, uh, I think Becas Chilenas has some. Uh, you just have to check with each individual country as to which uh, scholarships are available through your, through your government if there's something in addition. And also pay attention to what the restrictions are on those, whether you need to go straight back and give back to your country right away, or you can stay in the US through the um, one year after graduation or longer. Our deadlines are easy. September, January, and March. It's all you have to worry about right now. We have three, and then we tell you when, and then we'll tell you. We will have the dates shortly, and once um, we have your names and your emails from this presentation, then we will be sending you um, plenty of emails about what's going on. These are some of the links that you can use to get a consultation 20 minutes with someone uh, like me or you can get download the employment report as well. And now I would like to introduce Alejandro Jaramillo. I had the great fortune to meet Alejandro early on in the process and um, when Alejandro came to the school, it, we had a good opportunity to work together. He actually helped out in one of the other divisions of the school, and I was there at the time, and we, we did a lot of work together. And so um, Emory is a small place. It's a nice place. People get to know each other, and they stay in touch. So Alejandro, why don't you tell us a little bit um, about your, very briefly, your story. So you... You graduated Perfect. in 2018, right? So why did you decide to get an MBA? Okay, that's like the most common question uh, I always get. And probably you guys are going to be asked that question when you, you start looking for a job in the U.S. So that's the first question that everyone is going to ask you. So in my case, it was very clear. I always wanted to study abroad, specifically in the, in the U.S., uh, I had the experience of different family members. Actually, I had a sister that went to, to Emory, and I know several of the, of the alumni that went to Emory that are now well positioned uh, back in Colombia and in many different places. Uh, I wanted to have like a very strict uh, education. Uh, I wanted like high level education with a very international focus that will help me get to that next level. I was working by then in investment banking, and, uh, but I wanted to have like uh, to see what else was out there. And I knew that having a, an MBA was like a great opportunity to search for other opportunities, specifically working in the US. And I can tell you a little bit more uh, later. Yeah, so Alejandro, when you came in, your goal had not been to stay in banking. Tell us a little bit about your sort of trajectory and how you ended up doing one thing and then moving over. Perfect. So as I mentioned, I did investment banking before my MBA. And when I started, I said that I wanted to do something more kind of general management or uh, maybe in some companies like consumer products is more kind of the marketing uh, route. So I ended up having two different options for my internship, uh, one at Colgate Palmolive and Georgia Pacific, which is in, in, in Atlanta. I always wanted to have the opportunity to live at least a summer in New York City. So I decided to go for the Col Colgate Palmolive. And that's what, actually one of the first important goals that I wanted. I wanted to see something completely different. And I think uh, Goizueta put me in the right track to be to get that that option so i was there for the whole summer but then i decided that that wasn't my right fit uh i was kind of missing a little bit more uh, maybe faster paced environment so i decided to go for the consulting route so i started doing like all these recruiting processes um, I had the opportunity to do uh, recruiting with all the big consulting firms. They actually flew me to different places for the interview. I went to Spain, I went to, to Mexico, I went to, to Bogota, 
but I decided that I wanted to stay in the U.S. for a while, and uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers gave me the possibility to stay, and I was working, and I was able to work with them for the, they call it DDV, which is delivering deal value. It's kind of their M&A practice, uh, so I was hired by them. But then later on, like uh, as Kate was mentioning before, uh, we're working in the U.S., you need to get that sponsorship, and PwC was supporting my sponsorship but I wasn't uh, selected on my on the on the raffle or the lottery they do for those uh, visas. So then they decided uh, to give me the option to being transferred to Mexico City. So I ended up being in Mexico. But then, like during my MBA, I met my future wife, and she's Panamanian, and we were looking for options for both of us. And Grupo and Colombia offered me to come back. Uh, to work for Grupo One Colombia in Banismo in Panama. So I'm now in banking again, but not in investment banking and now more in kind of a commercial role. And I'm now managing relationships with the, uh, what they call big corporations here. Okay, so so the the MBA for you, you got to see a variety of, of different things and it, it helped you to meet your goals. How was that working with the career coaches? How did you manage that and, and what did you do? It was extremely helpful because at the beginning you arrive and then you don't know all this. Like there are many processes and they, they know how to help you. They know what are the companies that are going to go to the, to the school, uh, what, how you need to sell yourself, like your, your achievements in order to get those positions. So I think my coach was very helpful on helping me how to sell what I have achieved in order for an American company to understand those achievements, to make them kind of more universal. Sometimes like when we come from Latin America, we expect that everyone understands what we've done in business, but sometimes uh, those uh, companies in the US don't even know our company. So I think my coach was very helpful kind of uh, helping me sell my achievements into corporate America. I think that's how I, I will sell it. Okay, and then talk a little bit about the classroom itself, being being in the classroom and talking about your experience in your country and, and your past experience, how, how does that work? And, and how are the relationships between the students and the faculty? And you can talk a little bit maybe about the teams that get formed for the core. Got it. Yeah, I think so. As you mentioned earlier in the, your presentation, I think that's one of the greatest advantages of Goizueta. Uh, I think is the the best ranked smaller school uh, in, with the, within the MBA programs, um, and I think is the best way to actually get to know your 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 classmates. The, I know some other people that have been to other MBAs that don't even get to know everyone in your class. I can guarantee you that Emory, you're gonna know everyone. Probably you're not gonna be friends with everyone. That's very hard to 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 assume, but you're gonna know everyone in your class, and. The other thing that I think is uh, a great uh, possibility that you get at Emory that is harder in some other places is the relationship you get with your with your teachers, with the professors. I know different classmates that gone, like they found their jobs thanks to the professors. Like they were talking to the professor, like I'm really interested in this topic or this person, I, I've seen the LinkedIn, I know you know him. Can you please help me connect with them? And I can tell you for a fact that they were extremely helpful. They even organized maybe lunches or dinners or stuff to help the students get those connections. So, but you don't expect the professor to be looking for every one of you. You have to put a little bit from your side. But if you look for the professor and you ask them questions, please help me with this, help me with that. Or you can even work with them in different um, projects or research um, that they have that's going to be extremely helpful for you. So that's a huge advantage that I encourage everyone to, to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of the alumni network? I think it's extremely helpful and that's going to apply for this school and I, I think for every school. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you'll, and you'll see that Americans are actually very strong with this. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do when you are applying, for example, for a company is to look, okay, who is from Emory in this company? And I can tell you that everyone was extremely helpful in my case. And that 
help me open some doors. For example, in Colgate Palmolive, it's not like a, a company that normally recruits at, at Emory, but talking to an alum was one of the, of the possibilities that like put myself into it. So I think that's extremely helpful. Um, and in PwC, even more, like we have a huge um, Emory alumni network at uh, PwC and I encourage everyone to take advantage of that. So from at the moment that you're on, I think just find someone that you're interested in uh, from Emory, talk to them just to find how was their experience and how Emory helped them to get into those positions that they are right now. Um, but my invitation is to continue working on, on those connections with Emory even after you finish your MBA. Good. And, and when you think back on your studies in the program, what was maybe the most difficult um, or most challenging part of the program for you, whether it was the application getting in, whether it was a specific class or the job search? What was most challenging for you? And then what came across as probably most surprising? Okay, so I think the most difficult thing for me was kind of uh, handling all this information and possibilities you get. I think you, you, uh, the first, and this happens to everyone, uh, you get kind of overwhelmed, but I think it's kind of on purpose. <laughs> that's that's, that's how, how, how business is done. You're going to get a whole bunch of information, then you have to decide what, what works for you and what doesn't. So that was very challenging because you are uh, starting with like new classmates, you are on an MBA that everyone is competing to, to be like a, a, a good student, but at the same time, uh, you're looking for a job and at the same time you want to have fun and at the same time you want to travel maybe. So there are so many different things happening at the same time. So I think uh, just don't get frustrated. Uh, things are well, very well structured. Just let people help you, <laughs> I think. The, the many, many of the things that you have all the resources, don't be afraid to use them. And I Great. think that was the, the, the biggest challenge and that's my recommendation. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, we have a, a few questions in the, in the chat box. So, um, and I invite anyone that has a question to put it in the chat or if you can unmute yourself and you want to ask a question in the last 10 minutes that we have, I still have more questions that I can ask Alejandro, but I wanna make sure that we get to yours. So in terms of declaring a major, at Emory, you never have to declare a major. You all have to take the core classes and then thereafter you start taking electives, 14 electives in the two-year program or 10 electives in the one-year program. It can be spread out and it could be in a number of different concentrations or it could be in just one or two concentrations. So. Alejandro, you had several concentrations. You ended up with a few concentrations, right? Yes, probably without even noticing, so you're going to end up doing like a, a like good amount of concentrations, like if you just take what you're interested in. So I did marketing, finance, and strategy. Marketing, finance, and strategy. And then did you participate in impact? I did. My impact was in, in marketing. So I think this is a very interesting thing that... Uh, Emory has, like, I think other schools have it and they have different names for it. Yes. But um, at Guisuera, what we have is this um, kind of it's a, a class in which you are put into a group and you decide what type of project you want to do. So in my case, I did marketing and then we were working with a real project for General Electric. And in my case, then you, did, you do this presentation, you work with them, a, a, like a consulting project for a whole semester. And then at the end, you, you present and you compete with all their uh, groups that are presenting their projects and their solutions. So you get the whole experience of how consulting life is. And I did it for marketing, but there were some other options for finance, for real estate, for I think even entrepreneurship, there were social impact. There were so many different options. So right. you're gonna get this, like even if you don't do an internship or if you're not interested in that, you're gonna, you have the possibility of having the experience of working with a US company just by having a class that you have to take. Mm -hmm. Were you able to reference your impact project in, in any of your interviews, like when you were looking at PwC? 
I think I, I, I did my impact in marketing because I was going to work my summer internship in marketing and I hadn't taken like a marketing class in a while. So I wanted to, to be kind of more like mm-hmm. have all those concepts and type of work related, uh, like fresh. Yeah. And it was extremely helpful on how, for example, to define a project uh, or a problem. Like, okay, what are, what are the issues that are affecting this problem? How can I solve it? What are the possible uh, stakeholders that take into place for solving this project? So they, they give you a different frameworks in order to, to put that into a, a very concrete way. Uh, I think that was extremely helpful in my internship. And later on in consulting, obviously. <laughs> obviously, yeah. Okay, great. Let's see uh, another question. Um, academic support services on campus, such as tutoring or writing centers. And I, this would also be a good time to talk about, um, you know, TAs and that. So there are always professors or in most classes, I don't think that every class, but most of the classes, they have like uh, TAs, which is like teacher assistant, and they always take a student from the year above or the semester above that was very good at, at the class and that they are willing to help the professor. They get uh, paid a little, but the most important thing is just uh, to give this opportunity of having like the teacher experience and help the classmates. Mm-hmm. So yes, you have the possibility of having uh, teaching support and you have the office hours with the professors but as I mentioned before they're very helpful to get to know the professors but uh, but also to solve some questions from the class right I know that um, we witnessed you know even within the finance area students that maybe were struggling a little bit with finance would come in on a Saturday and work with the professors and go through until they got it, until they understood it. And it wasn't ever um, a problem. It was it was to help the students because the goal of the MBA and the goal of the program is for you to become successful and for you to successfully reach your goals. And so that is, that is why we have the rigor in the program and you do come to class, you do show up. So, but there are some things outside of class. So what did you do outside of class that um, was interesting or any clubs you might've joined? Oh, like I think everyone was even involved to uh, at some point to some of the clubs. Like it's actually helpful for your uh, uh, applications for jobs and stuff. So we did this entrepreneurship club. We did the the, the tech club, uh, the general management club, and like you get involved up to the point that like you want. Some of them they give you the possibility to even run the club or you just participate in some of the sessions. For example, for the Latin club, uh, I was the, the the treasurer, for example. And then we organized different events. Uh, we did some visits. We had these Latino parties. So that, that depends on how much involvement you want to get. Okay. Uh, so, so besides that, like as Kate mentioned, there are so many fun things to do in Atlanta. And that was one of the reasons why I chose uh, Emory as well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you said so many fun things. What? Tell us a few. What? I know you enjoyed the first season of the Atlanta United. Obviously, yes. Yeah. So the the sports scene in Atlanta is something uh, very interesting. Like you get to have like a very good soccer team, a good uh, football team, a, a great uh, baseball team with a new stadium for baseball, new stadium for soccer and football. Uh, you now have the Hawks that are in the playoffs. Like you have a very nice sports scene, and I actually had the opportunity of having the the Super Bowl while I was in Atlanta. Like I, I wasn't able to get into the Super Bowl, but there were so many <laughs> e- events going around uh, around the city. So there are so many different things to do that uh, and, and diverse stuff. Like you find food from all over the world. Uh, it's not very expensive. The weather is like one of the nicest weathers you can get. It doesn't get that cold, but it's obviously hot, but but you're not gonna yeah. waste some time because of the hot. Uh-huh, and Alejandro, you lived in pretty close to campus, if I remember. You lived down at Post. So uh, what's, did, there's, how do people get to campus and talk a little bit about the living situation? Okay, so Post, Barcliffe is one of these complex uh, that you lease. They know Emory, so they're going to lease you very easily, even as a foreigner. 
Um, it's very close to school. There's a, a shuttle that takes you back and forth with uh, like a, a schedule that goes whole day. Uh, you have nice supermarkets that are very close to post. You have uh, even a tennis court. You have a swimming pool. And that's just one of the places where you can stay yeah. around that area. Even with a shuttle access, you're going to have so many other options. You have Emory Point that is even closer to school, a little bit more expensive, but is newer. Like you, you can you can talk to like you're going to get my contact. Like if you have any questions, just let me know or you can ask any of the people that have been there. I know that everyone is extremely helpful. Great, and we are we are coming up. There's one more question in the box. Let me see. What's the culture like there? Is it competitive? Is it collaborative? The diversity of the student body. That's a, a great question. At the beginning, I, I thought that it was going to be like it, it's nice to have competition, but not like a, a unfriendly competition. I think that there were some people that were competitive that wanted to be the best, but it was never, never kind of. Uh, uh, hard competition, like being hard with the other person or like a harmful competition. I never saw it that way. So I think it's an uh, extremely nice community uh, and extremely diverse, as you mentioned before. So I think you just get the opportunity of learning from everyone, not only like diverse in terms of uh, like the regular diversity, but also diversity of experience. People just come from doing so many different things. And even for us, for example, doing studying business with people that come from arts or from teaching or from the army. Like that's amazing experience. And Emory is very great at getting the best of, for example, this uh, like former military, uh, like from vet veterans. It's uh, extremely helpful to learn from them. Yeah, yeah, great leadership skills. Okay, we are coming up very quickly on our time and we have to stay on time for the grad school. Um, any last parting words about the application or the essay or what's the most important thing at this stage when individuals are considering schools? I think the most important thing is, it is always impossible to know it for sure, but kind of think of what you want to do afterwards or what you want to take out of the MBA. If you want to take out of the MBA, like the best uh, connections, okay, probably you prefer a smaller school. Okay, I really want to stay in the US. Okay, so is this the school that's going to give me the connections for the companies that I would like to work for? Consider that. Or I really want to go to a school that is going to give me a job in... I don't know if you have a specific city, consider that probably this is the best or maybe not the best school. Kind of think what do you want to do next and consider that and know also the advantages of like Emory that we just mentioned. Great. Thank you. Great advice. And we know from you that you went from Atlanta to New York to Atlanta to Mexico City and now to Panama. So truly you you are living what we've always said that you can get there from here. So um, we hope that everyone benefited from the conversation that we've just had with Alejandro and that you will stay in touch with us if you are considering getting your Emory, your MBA at Emory. And also that on July 10, we will be participating in the um, in the interview sessions that are going on through the, the grad school. So we look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you so much. And with that, we will end the session. Thank, thank you, you and good luck to everyone. Good luck to everyone, yes, thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Kate, nice to see you. Good to see you, ciao. Thank you so much, I'll call you. Thank you. <laughs> I think we have still a few participants. Seven. So thank you. Thank you Seven. so much, okay. Kate and Alejandro. Alejandro is amazing. He's he's the best. It was yeah, so he, nice to work with him, and it was good to see him, and he's being so successful. So um, thank you, Cecilia. Thank you for this opportunity to get with your individuals, and we will see you on the tenth when. 
Camilo, a current student, will join us who is um, getting ready Perfect. to, you know, he's in his internship right now. So he oh, will wow. join That's us. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. So. He's, he's really great. Yep. Yeah. So I'll see you on the 10th. All right. And thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. And get some rest. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.